Today I'm going to show you how to create your first Android application using a really cool tool from MIT called App Inventor 2. If you have your own phone, you may want to install a couple of apps. Go to the Google Play Store and the first thing you're going to need is a QR barcode scanner. I use this one but almost any barcode scanner will work. Click Accept, Download, and Install. If you have a phone, there'll be another app you're going to want to get. It's the MIT AI2 companion application. Click on that and install. These applications will allow you to develop and see your changes real time on your phone. Let's drag them somewhere where we have easy access. There you go. If you want to use your own phone or device, you may need to make some changes so that you're able to install the applications you build. Most applications come from the Google Play Store, which is a verified source. When you build an application, you are an unverified source. The first thing you want to make sure is that developer options on your phone are enabled. Make sure that USB debugging is checked. This is what allows you to connect your phone to a computer. Next, let's go to security. Click on security. See where it says unknown sources? Make sure that that's checked. That will allow you to install applications that do not come from the Google Play Store. As I was saying, if you have your own Android device, you can use MIT's AI2 companion software to connect to the application while you build it. A little QR code will show up, and then you pull your phone out and use the barcode scanner you installed earlier. Click where it says Scan QR Code, and that'll launch your camera. Take that to the screen and scan the QR code. What will happen is it will automatically launch the application that you're working on and you will be able to see your changes real time. If you don't have your own phone, don't worry about this step. Whether you have your own phone or not, we're going to create the app the same way. You're going to create it online using MIT's tool. But before we begin, let's add a new folder to our flash drive. Go to Android, New Folder, and let's call it Apps. Now let's launch our web browser and go to the App Inventor tool. It's appinventor.mit.edu. Awesome. You'll see a button in the right hand corner called Create, which will allow you to log in with your Google password. If prompted for permission, click Allow. Once you sign in, you'll see welcome screens. Click continue and just go right past those. You're going to want to click on start new project. Our project is going to be named Bulldog Talk. Use upper camel case. Take a moment to look around. You'll see something that looks like a phone in the middle of the screen. You'll see a palette to your left and properties to your right. Let's start by setting the screen properties. Align horizontal will be center. Align vertical will be top. The background color is red. Scrollable is yes. And the title that we want to see on the screen is Arvada Bulldogs. Colon, talk to me. 
remember to refer to your instructions. In order to arrange things on the screen, we use things called layouts. Anything you see on the left of your screen, you can drag to the screen itself. We're going to drag a horizontal arrangement onto the viewer. Let's set its properties. After we rename it to logo layout, upper camel case. Its width will be fill parent. Its height will be fill parent. And align horizontal should be center. Next thing we need to do is we need to download our Arvada logo. Go to another tab in your web browser. Go to static.colstock.com images bulldog logo underscore 518 by 518 dot png. There it is. Right click save image as and you're going to want to put that on your flash drive. Go to Colstock, Android, Apps, and let's save it there. Let's go back to the App Inventor. Next, we're going to drag an image component, which will have our logo on it, into the logo layout. Let's rename it to Logo Image Upper Camel Case. Now let's set the properties. Under Picture, you're going to upload the file you just downloaded, the Bulldog. Go to your flash drive, go to Colstock, Android, Apps, and select the file to upload it. Press OK. Two more properties to set. Width, 164 pixels, and height, 164 pixels. Under Layout, let's drag another horizontal arrangement into the viewer, right below our last one. Let's rename that to Title Layout upper camel case. Press OK. Let's set the properties. Width should be fill parent. Height should be 60 pixels. Align horizontal should be center and oops, my height that needs to be OK, 60 pixels. Align vertical also is center. Awesome. Now, we're going to drag a label for our title inside the title layout. Let's call this title label upper camel case. Font bold is yes. Font size is 20. The text that we want on our label is Arvada High School. Text alignment should be center and text color should be white. Let's drag another horizontal arrangement into the viewer. This one we're going to call Today Layout, Upper Camel Case. Width is fill parent, height is fill parent, align horizontal center, and align vertical top. Now let's grab a button and drag that inside of that layout. We're going to call it Today Button, Upper Camel Case. Let's make that bold. The text on our button should read, 
What is today? With the question mark. Fill parent for width. All right, we're almost there. Let's grab another horizontal arrangement layout and drag it underneath there. We're going to call this the speak layout, upper camel case. We're going to fill parent for the width. Now we're going to get a text box to take user input and drag it inside of the speak layout. We're going to rename this component to speak text box. Time to set the properties. The hint should say, enter what you want to say here, followed by an ellipse, three periods. Multi-line is yes. For width, fill parent, and for height, fill parent as well. Now we're going to grab another button. Sometimes this can be tricky. You want to try to put the button right next to the text box. Oop, fail. Let's try it one more time. Right there. Excellent. That's going to work. Let's rename this to speak button, upper camel case. Font bold should be yes. And the text to display on our button is speak, followed by an exclamation mark. Excellent. Now we're going to add some what we call non-visible components. These are things that are going to give us capabilities in our programming. We want to add text to speech, just drag it into the viewer. Under sensors, we want to grab a clock. And we also want the accelerometer sensor. Under media, we want to grab our player. Notice how you must drag it into the viewer or will not be included. All of the non-visible components will be at the bottom. We need to get an audio file for our player. So go back to a web browser, go to static.colstock.com audio earthquake.wav W-A-V. That should show in your browser and play. Right click save video as and save the earthquake.wav onto your flash drive. Go back to the editor, select your player one component, and where it says source, click on it and choose upload file. Browse to the earthquake.wave file you just downloaded and press OK. Now it's time to program. You will see that there's a blocks button on the menu in App Inventor. Click on that. All the code items are on the left and your viewer is on the right. You can drag things. For example, we're going to create a global variable called time now. This is going to store the current time. Then under text, we're going to assign it the empty string or nothing. Next, we're going to go down and find our today button and choose its click event. When today button click. We're going to be able to put all kinds of code in here. The first thing we want to do is go to variables and get the set time now. Now we're going to use our clock. Go to clock and find its now function. 
drag it into the viewer. That will set the value of the variable to the current time. Now we're going to use our text to speech. We're going to find the call text to speech one dot speak function and place it inside the win today button click. This is what's going to speak our message. We're going to grab a text join and we're going to add eight sections to it. Don't worry right now if you don't understand everything that's going on. In due time all of this will make sense. This project is meant to show you the capabilities of App Inventor and just what's possible. Once again create eight strings. Grab this text component and inside of it you're going to type don't be salty bra it's Remember to, to refer to your detailed instructions. Now we're going to go back to our clock and find its month name function. Drag that into the viewer. We're going to pass to that function the current time. Go back to variables, find the get function, drag it over. We're going to get the current value of time now. Go back to our clock and now you're going to need the day of the month function. It also needs the current value of time now. In order to pause the speech we use commas so we're going to put in a string that has just a comma. Let's go back to our clock. Now we need the year. Find the year function and drag that into the viewer. The year function also needs the value of the current time. Let's add another comma to pause the speech and let's get two more strings to complete our message. In this one, you're going to say, Mr. Colstock says, it's a good day to be a bulldog. Okay, one more. In this one, you're going to say, oh, comma, by the way, comma, do your homework. Our first code block is complete. Now we're going to create a code block to respond to when the speak button is pressed. We need a global variable called message, and we're also going to set this to an empty string nothing in it. Let's go to our speak button and find its win click event. Drag that into the viewer. When the speak button is clicked we are going to set the value of our global message variable to whatever is in the speech text box. So find the speech text box and find where it says text. This will assign the current value in the text box to the message variable. Next, let's use our text-to-speech to speak a message. We're going to ask it to speak what's ever in the global message variable. So we need to get that. Awesome. That code block is complete. We have two more to do, and this is to respond to the Android's accelerometer, the phone being shaken. Go to the accelerometer and find its win shaking event. When the phone is shaking, we need to go to our player and we're going to set its source. In other words, what music it's going to play. 
we need a string and we're going to specify the audio we uploaded earlier earthquake dot wave once we've set the source of the player now we can ask the player to start playing so go back to your player and find its start function Put it right there. Okay. Now we want to find the player completed function. When the music is done playing, we want to speak a message. So when the music's over, we're going to call text to speech. and we're going to provide it a message using a string. Our message is oh, comma, shake me baby, comma, I like that. For this project, just follow along with the instructions. You'll have an opportunity to learn this in more detail. Now it's time to build our app. Go to the Build menu and click on App Save APK to My Computer. APK is short for Android Package. This is your application. It'll take a moment to build and it will download to your downloads directory. There it is. Go ahead and show in folder. Select your APK, control C to copy or use the menu. Go to your flash drive, Colstock, Android, apps and control V to paste your APK onto your flash drive. Now we're going to transfer it to our class website so that we can install it on our Android device. Go to the desktop and click on FileZilla. FileZilla is the program we use to FTP files to our website. Log in to the host www.ahstech.net. Use your student ID and your six digit birthday. Then click on Quick Connect. You'll see you have a public HTML folder. That's where all your files must go on the web server. On the left are your local files. Make sure to navigate to your flash drive and drag over the Bulldog Talk APK to your website. Once it's done, you will see the file on the web server. It's that easy. Let's install and test the app on our Android device. You're going to need to use your web browser to navigate to your class website. www.ahstech.net forward slash squiggle and then your student ID. You should be able to see all your files including the Bulldog Talk APK. If you click on Bulldog Talk APK, it will warn you, confirm this warning, and it will start downloading. Once downloaded, click on the APK to install. Follow the installation prompts to install on your device. And then open it. Here is your application. Let's test the Today button. Salty bra. It is October 5, 2014. Mr. Colstock says it's a good day to be a bulldog. Oh, by the way, do your homework. Now let's test the text box, which speaks anything the user types in it, such as hello. Hello. Now let's test the accelerometer. When we shake the phone, our code should run.
It's always good to clean up after yourself. If you're sharing a device with somebody, go ahead and uninstall your app before you give it to them. Every version of Android does this a little bit differently, but in mine, you click on the sprocket, click on the application you want to get rid of, choose uninstall, and then OK. Great work. Have a nice day.